I want to talk to you today about into the new and don't look back. Go ahead, write it down into the new and don't look back. I'm going to start off with Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says this, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So this scripture is letting us know that God is making things new. He likes new things. He continually points to the new in his word and in his Bible. We have the New Testament. We have New Jerusalem in the book of Revelation. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you in the book of John. In the book of Isaiah, God says, I will do a new thing like we just read. And in Revelation, God says, behold, I make all things new. So God is a God of the new. Now, as followers of Jesus, there's going to be times and seasons in our lives when new things are, requ are required of us by God. New territory that he wants us to step into. New opportunities, new places, new projects, new hobbies, new experiences, new relationships, and new people. And the reason God asks us and wants us to step into new things is because God's best for our lives is in the new things he has for us. So this leads us to point number one, encouraging you to write this down. God's best for us is in the new thing. Now we see this principle outlined for us in the story of Abraham, the father of our faith. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 says this, Now the Lord had said to Abram, who will be later known as Abraham, Get out of your country, and from your kindred, your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. So we see in this verse that God is asking Abram to leave everything he's known and to come into a new land, a new thing that God had for him. And then verse 2 says this, this is God speaking, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. So God was asking Abraham to leave everything he knew. God was asking Abraham to leave the old things behind. And the reason God was asking Abraham to leave those things was because there was something far better that God had for Abraham. So God's going to ask us to step into new things and leave old things behind. But it's because what God has for us in the new thing is going to far outweigh what we had in the past. Remember, Abraham said, I want you to leave. Or remember, God said, I want you to leave so that I can bless you and make you a great nation and make your name great. And so God will ask us to go into the new thing, not because he wants to take from us, but because he wants to give to us something way better beyond what we could imagine or think. Now, when it comes to new things, we love these types of new things. A new car, new clothes, new shoes, new movies, new shows, new restaurant, new vacation spot. We have no problem with these new things. We welcome these new things with open arms and we're like, yes, Lord, to those new things. But when God asks us to do something radically new in our life, 
like make a big change, make a big move, take a big risk, give up something we've always known and loved, or take on a new project, or step into a brand new career, or step into more responsibility like a leadership role, things like that. When it comes to those new things, we can be tempted to shy away from those things because these new things require a lot from us, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. It takes courage, trust, and faith in God to step out of comfort zones, to step out of ease and routine and do a new thing. This can be intimidating, scary, threatening, because humans are creatures of habit. We don't always like uncertainty. We don't always like not knowing what we're stepping into. We have a fear of the unknown. So we can be tempted to stay inside of comfort zones and never do anything new or different. This is what God asked Abraham to do. So yes, stepping into the new, it will require faith and it will require courage and you won't always know every single detail of how it's going to work out and it won't be easy but saying no to the new things God has for you is to forfeit God's very best for your life so encouraging you to step into the new thing God is putting on your heart to do. Now here's the good news about stepping into the new. New things can do this for you. Open doors to your destiny. Stepping into the new things can pave the way towards a better future for you and your loved ones and perhaps even the world around you. Stepping into the, into the new can create opportunities for you, for growth, for healing, for abundance. It can position you for increase, align divine connections like friends, mentors, colleagues, community, and maybe even a future spouse. Stepping into the new can unlock dormant potential that's inside of you that you don't know you have. And stepping into the new can bring brand new relationships into your life that will bless you in ways that you did not see coming. Now, I'm going to talk about point number two. Stepping into the new things will require leaving the old things behind. We see this principle outlined for us in the teachings of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9 Verses 16 through 17 says this. No man puts a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up takes from the garment. And the rent, the clothing, is made worse. Verse 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles unless the bottles break and the wine runs out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. So what we see in, in Jesus' teachings here, and how it relates to this message today, is that the new and the old don't mesh well together. They don't go well together. They can't be combined. Or else, if you try to, it makes things worse. Or like the scripture said, the wine runs out or the bottles break and perish. So this verse is letting us know that when we step into the new thing God has for us, it's going to require us to leave old things behind. Old ways, old friends, old relationships that maybe aren't bearing any good fruit in our lives, old thinking, old habits, old mistakes, old baggage, old addictions, old sins. We can't move forward 
into the new thing God has for us if we are hanging on to the old things from the past. So we need to leave the past behind to step into the new thing. And we don't want to look back at that old day, at those old things. Point number three, the past keeps us stuck. We see this principle outlined for us in the story of Abram, Abraham, and his nephew, Lot. In Genesis, going back to Genesis chapter 12, we're going to read that chapter, the first four verses, but we're going to find out what Abraham does once God tells Abraham to leave. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, and from your kindred, your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now here's the verse that matters for this principle we're learning. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Good job. But here's where Abraham went wrong. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. So we see here that in verse 1 of Genesis 12, God says, get out of your country and from your family and your father's house. And then verse 4 says, so Abram, oh, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. Lot was Abram's nephew. God had said, leave your family, leave your father's house. But Abram disobeyed God in this one area. He obeyed God by leaving, but he disobeyed by bringing his past with him, Lot. And so Abraham disobeyed this direction from God to leave the past behind, his family, his father's house. And instead, he brought Lot with him. Abraham tried to bring his past with him. He tried to bring his ne nephew with him. Lot represents the past and the baggage that we try to take with us on our journey with God. Lot represents our tendency to hang on to the past and the things we're familiar with, the things that we know and that we love. But you see, God knows best. He's not trying to be mean. He's not trying to take from you. If God tries, if God tells you to leave something or drop something, it's always for our good. And we learn this in Abram's story. Because Abram disobeyed God's direction and commandment to leave his past behind, Lot, his nephew, ended up causing Abram a lot of strife, drama, issues, and delays. I don't have time to go into detail about all of the things that Lot did, all of the trouble he brought, but basically the story of Abram and Lot is outlined for us in the book of Genesis. Go check it out. But all you really need to know is that Lot got himself in a lot of trouble. Lot caused a lot of trouble for Abram, for Abraham, and Lot's wife was a troublemaker. The dude was just trouble. Lot was trouble. He brought a lot of trouble, strife, and delays for Abram. So I've got a question for you. Do you have a lot that you are trying to bring along with you? And all it's doing is causing you problems, grief, and delays. Some of you are trying to take your lot with you 
into the future. A lot of baggage, a lot of people, a lot of old ways that God is wanting you to let go of. We need to drop our lots and leave them behind. Because if we don't, we will end up with a lot of strife, drama, pain, issues, and delays that we don't want. Lot will slow you down. Your past will keep you stuck in the same old, same old. So encouraging you to leave the past behind. Leave the past mistakes behind. Leave the old ways of sin behind. Leave the relationships that are keeping you stuck behind. Leave that job that's making you miserable behind. Leave the baggage and weights of the past behind. Leave your lot behind and step into the new thing that God has for you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says this, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with the patience the race that is set before us. So this scripture is letting us know that let's leave the baggage behind, leave the weights and the sins behind. Why? So we can run freely the race that God has set before us. We can't step into the new thing that God has for us if we are hanging on to the weights and the baggage of the past or if we're looking back at the past, we have to move forward with God and leave those things behind. One more thing to add about Lot. Lot's wife looked back at Sodom and Gomorrah and what happened to her? She turned into a pillar of salt. So I'll explain this story a little bit. So they were fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah represented a place of sin, a, a place that was wicked. And God was going to bring his judgment upon that city. And so Lot and his wife, they're fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot's wife makes a big mistake. She looks back. At Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, she looked back at her past. And what happens in that story is she's turned into a pillar of salt. And what that represents is that when we're looking back at our past, looking back at the old ways, the old things we used to do, the, the old people, the old places, the old ways of being, when we're looking back at it, we're getting stuck in place. We can't move forward if we're looking back at the past. God wants us to be laser focused on the future. Genesis chapter 19 verse 26 says this, But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. When we look back at the past, we stop moving forward. We remain stuck. You can't walk forward or move forward when you are looking back at the past. So encouraging you to step into the new and don't look back.